my name is Rob Shao, and it's a great pleasure and honor to be here. Thank you so much for having me. So check out this guy. Let me see. There. I call him the dude. The dude just arrived in Barcelona a few minutes ago. Um, he spent the last um, few months doing jet ski, traveling, and so forth. But now he's here in Barcelona and wants to do something else. And that dude is this me. Why, why am I here today in my monkey suit when I was that guy a year ago? Um, basically, I spent the last 20 years in Miami. Miami is a great city. It has three main industries. It has real estate, travel, and cocaine. And I did business in, in two of them. So those startups are what you can call regular SaaS startups, uh, B2B companies. SaaS stands for software as a service. And the main purpose of those systems was to automate workflow and make data updates automatic. In one of them, we built a real estate website. And in the other one, that would turn out to be the second largest. Oops, I'm already ahead here. Um, and the other one was a booking platform. But now we're creating an AI first startup. And that basically means that we're trying to mimic human intelligence and make something that can really make decisions for people. And I think that's what's going to be uh, a lot of what's going on in computer science for the next 10 years. So our company is called CN. And it's, we call it CN because it's 100 times better than anything we've done before. Of course, when I came to my Barcelona, I went to Mercadona, and I saw that CN is also a very fancy toilet paper. <laughs> so, but the company is all about making sales more productive. And um, in this speech, we're not talking about that so much as how to build a, a startup in, for AI first. And one of the concepts I want to talk about is multi-tenancy. Uh, that basically means that you share your code and your databases for all your customers. And we're doing the same thing with AI uh, first companies. But now we also have to share our data models. So that's a whole brand new thing. In order to do that, we have to uh, get a lot of data for a long periods of time. We call those time series. And we came up with ways to connect our customers' data. Uh, we built ways to collect the data ourselves for surveys and so forth. And in short, we kind of created this big data warehouse that uh, allows us to, to do this. It was just one problem. The data that we got from our customers was crap. And, and nothing was consistent. Everything meant different things for different companies. And uh, if we were going to try to do machine learning on that stuff as it was, we would have a lot of problems. So it was one problem. Uh, so the solution to that is models. So we actually figure out a way to create models that are solving these types of problems and make the data consistent, fix the accuracies, and uh, b then we can rely on that data uh, after we have applied our machine learning models. So that's the first step that we did. Another problem that we encountered was that everybody loved the idea that we could automate and, and make their sales team more pro productive, but they didn't want to give their data to this random startup that just showed up. And data pr privacy is a big deal here in Europe. Uh, fortunately, we had spent a lot of time making payment systems and, and so forth. Of course, we were able to handle the, the compliance issues. All right, here's, this is very difficult. I don't know if you guys see that I'm doing the slides out of America. So I just put in this break slide here with the cat to, to, to get everybody a chance to catch up because I'm, before I get to the next one, data science presentation should always have a cat, I, I think. Um, <laughs> But now to some more specific things. We do a lot of classifications. And one of the things we spend a lot of time working on is to make sure that we understand what something means. We use NLP and natural language processing for that. And for things like, for example, if you have the word Google, that means the same as search ending or, or Google with three O's. And we have to make sure that we understand that. Because then we want to make predictions. And you guys know that that can sometimes be called regressions. And we, we have a lot of regressions that we're running in our, in our platform to be able to tell what important events, like if something's going to sell or not, for example. But what's really cool is when you can predict uh, and control the future. And that's where we have created something we call the heuristics engine. And it's a very simple concept. We take uh, predefined scenarios, and we sort them based on the ones that have the biggest financial impact. And in the US, we call that picking the low-hanging fruit. So that is super important. 
Another thing with AI startups, I don't know if you guys have heard of any big exits that companies that have sold their AI startup yet. And I think we were very early on yet. A lot of the early companies are focused on creating tools, but what people are really looking for is solutions. So what we are trying to do is to create a solution-oriented company that solves the problem around sales. So the first thing we did was to basically talk to a lot of people about, hey, what needs do you have uh, from an AI system. And we also looked at a lot of the data. Does it carry the prediction signals that we need in order to make any kind of meaningful impact on this, this field? And we figured that out, we raised a million dollars, and then we have been working on a team here in Barcelona. This is our team, um, super proud of them. Uh, we have some awesome people from prior Google, we have MIT, Columbia graduates from ESADE, et cetera. And we're working very hard to create a great company culture. The most important thing for us is to have uh, happy customers. And we're super excited to work with some of the local startups here in, in Barcelona to help them grow. And every single one of them has their own sales productivity problems. And we're applying these types of tools that I just talked about to, to help them grow and, and create a, a better business for them and for ourselves. So to wrap this up, what have we learned as creating a, a startup, AI first startup in Barcelona? And I think one of the things is that you just have a great, lot of great talent. If you look around, you see a lot of great data scientists here, right? And the thing is that there's not yet a playbook on how to do these things. Um, and that means that it's kind of exciting but also challenging, and you just had to get your hands dirty. But what I wanted to say is that, you know, I feel like this is a super exciting uh, problem. I hope uh, that you guys are thinking about creating AI startups. And if you do, please connect with me. I am, besides being the CEO of CN, also an advisor and an investor for a lot of startups. And if you have an idea, maybe we can work on it together in some way. And uh, if that all works out, we can both become the dude again. And that's not a, a terrible thing to be. Um, so hoping uh, that we can find ways to work together. Thank you very much. It was great to be here.